Both our rear tires, tires are bald. David's is totally bald. Um, he doesn't want to get it changed though, that's his choice. And um, it's not through to the canvas, which is good. But um, we just got to take our time, fingers crossed we get there safely. Um, we'll end up doing over 7,000 miles. Okay, it's 5 a.m. Potentially this is our last day of riding. We're gonna ride to Spokane, but we might just see how we feel and we might keep going all the way through to Seattle. So that'll be 1,100 Ks. Um, and then have two nights in Seattle before we fly to LAX. So I've had two days rest. It's, it's um, 5.15 a.m. I've got to find a coffee, I've got to find a Starbucks. I can't travel without a coffee, just saying. Let's hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more, no more, no more. It's dark, I think it's the first time I've left in the dark. Come on, Parry, where are you? Come on, Parry. You ready to rumble? Ready to rumble. Okay, we're headed to Spokane. We might go all the way to Seattle. We're unsure yet, aren't we? So to Spokane. Starting route to Spokane. All right, let's go. Head south on four streets. Nearly eight hours to Spokane. Let's go.
stopped running away to Spokane to the US border. David, what are you doing? On our way to Spokane or the US border and um, we've just stopped at this beautiful lake. So I think I'm gonna put the drone up. Let's check it out. for a bit of a break in the US. We stopped at a store called the Good Grief Store. Good Grief. Good Grief, it's hot. How cool is this top? This is my one and only sponsor, Bob Head from the UK. And look, Kevlar lined. Cool biker gear, I reckon. I reckon not a lot of people make cool gear you know but anyway enough of a plug of that how are you so the tires are real issue um, we've probably only got oh, 600 kilometers to go now I reckon to Seattle but I just want to show you David's back tire That's pretty bad, it's through to the canvas. Um, it's his choice, I've told him to change it, he won't. Um, in my opinion, it's dangerous. How many miles did your bike have on it when you picked it up? 9,000? Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. so a bit of an issue, we hide these bikes for 25 days. This rear tire and the front tire already had 9,000 miles on it. Tires are only good between 10 and 15,000 miles. They should have had new tires on, to be honest. Now let's look at my back one. Yeah. Mine's through to the wear indicator as well, so they should have really had new tyres on. The guys knew we were doing some big kilometres, some big miles. The front's still legal, just the fronts are okay, but the rears are both bald. David's is, is worse than mine. Show goes on, yeah? What do you say? Fuck. <laughs> the show goes on. We're just going to fix David's back tyre up just to make it a bit safer, so... Perfect. Yeah, I'll just put another one put on, another, put just another. in case. Okay, well, it's good to have a backup, so he's going to put two on. Oh, perfect. There we go. Perfect, look at that. That is a good job. Have a look at that. I've just done 7,000 miles on the bike. Check it out. Seven hours, we feel pretty good, we feel okay. Beautiful conditions, sunny in Idaho, heading to Spokane, then to Seattle. So we've just eaten, we've just done 410 miles, we're just in Spokane, saying I've got 
449 kilometers to go to the destination, which is Seattle. So um, we've been riding for about, I don't know, seven hours. It's a nice day, it's hot. Anyway, show goes on. Having a break, done um, just on 500 miles. How are you feeling about your rear tire? not even through to the wear indicator yet. It's quite there if we keep riding at the moment. Because both our rear tyres are bald. David is actually down to the canvas. Under the canvas is the steel. We only have 300 k's to go, so we're just taking it easy. So filling up for the very last time. We're 270 k's from Seattle. And um, I don't know how many times I've filled up. It's been a lot though. Hot. It's really hot. Nearly there. Let's hope the tyres last and then have a blowout. I've taken my clothes off because I'm going to wear my jacket just in case I have a blowout. I've got a better chance to live. It's fucking hot. Just saying. Anyway, when you're a tough motherfucker, who cares? Just go with it. Just watched my mate die in hospital. I've got nothing to whinge about. <laughs> Fuck it's hot! film one last time with the drone I found this spot on the highway not, not a great place to spot but I think the scenery is going to be magnificent I've just got to climb that little cliff first but anyway
Well, that was my last drone flight for this trip. And what a magical spot to film just at the end. Just gorgeous. We're around about 200 k's from Seattle. Not exactly the ideal spot to stop to get a drone shot. But anyway, I reckon that footage will be worth it. We'll see, hey? Probably crash in. Go, just do it. Are you going or not? Just, just, just blame your Tourette. Okay, we got in front of a sheriff. The proper way, I, I think. There's no lights flashing yet, but he is. He, he is behind Harry, behind me. His cars overheated. People being sick. We're averaging one. We're getting. It takes us 25 minutes to move one mile at the moment. Breakdowns everywhere. Oh, how's the sunburn going? Oh, it's going good, thanks. That shit. Yeah, I'm glad we're on bikes. Hey? I'm glad we're on bikes. Because of the lane splitting, yeah? Yeah. Look at the backdrop. Oh, 
Fuck man, I'm over it. My helmet is squishing. 14 hours we've been on the bikes for. I just want to tell you the reality of being on a bike. I'm having Dr. Pepper. I've got this cabana shit thing that tastes like shit. Just eat shit because I'm exhausted. Interesting, I don't know where I'm headed with this, but a true biker knows the feeling. When you're a long way from home and you just can't be fucked with anything, you just gotta eat shit. It's a great story that one, isn't it? Mm, interesting. No, I'm not. Seen how many likes you've got, how many bloody... You live on your phone, mate. Well, you do. You live on your phone. No, you live on your phone. No, you don't talk enough. Welcome to Seattle, baby! Nearly 16 hours on the bike! Just trying to get to the hotel room in Seattle. It's just, there's these loops everywhere. Done 690 miles so far today. Pretty wrecked. Tell me 10 minutes into the hotel. This is where you go to get deep. Just got to concentrate. Made it. Hello. Hey, look at your tire. Still not near the tread indicator, you're fine. Nothing to worry about, mate. We might as well keep going to San Francisco or something. <laughs> I'm fucking over it, mate. I am over it. <laughs> we fucking made it. We me. fucking made it. Get off me. Bit of Brokeback Mountain going on tonight. <laughs> the guy in reception's watching us. Yeah, I know. We've got a, we've got a reservation. Okay, what was your last uh, Daniel Hayes. Yep. Daniel Hayes. Two, two rooms. Is this the Wyndham Travel Lodge? I can we in the wrong hotel? Hang on, I'll just get my phone. Fuck! I'll tell you what, if we're, at the ro if, we're at the, if we're at the wrong hotel, I'm gonna go nuts. No, I mean, I'm not gonna go nuts at you. No, I understand. Is it downtown south? No, it was north. Was it? Travel Lodge by Wyndham, Seattle. North or is it north? North of downtown. Okay, yeah, so they're actually further down south from here. How far? Oh, yeah, it's about like a mile and a half further down south.
What's the room like? It'll hey? It'll go. Tell you what, I'll be taking all my shit out of my panniers here. Yeah. Seedy, seedy area. Wow. Oh, yeah. This is fine. Funny, funny light that, but anyway, we're here, we're safe. Hallelujah. What a day. Sunburnt. 16 hours, that was pretty full on. Gonna just wash up quickly, we're gonna go and eat, then I'm gonna go to bed. Um, not eating all day. And uh, we made it to Seattle safe, we're back home. All we're gonna do tomorrow is clean the bikes and drop them back, and the journey's nearly over. So, um, we are in a very seedy area of Seattle. If I get robbed tonight, I'm stuffed. But there's like prostitutes all up and down the street. Um, and it's all pretty feral looking, just being honest. Not being disrespectful to Seattle, but it's just a... And the guy serving us at the desk, I looked at him and then he was wearing thongs. I mean, it's okay to wear thongs, but I just thought that was a bit odd. Anyway, I'm going. We're gonna go out for dinner just quickly and eat. I'll get David Parry. Wonder how he's going. Let's go and eat, you'll feel better. Come on, let's go. Oh, the guy recommended to go to Cafe Beth's Cafe. Here it is here. This looks like a really cool place. There's a dude in there with a kilt. Hey? Off to the left, there's a dude in there with a kilt. Really? What a, what a cool place. Yes. Are you okay for video? Yeah. Take oh. it easy on it. Okay. Try not to keep us in it. Okay. Anything but us. Okay. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a random place. It's cool though, huh? I'm so wrecked. <laughs> Today is day 24. We're going to clean the Harley Davidsons and we're going to take them back. We're nearly done. Oh. What a beautiful day. How can anyone be so happy in the mornings? I hate him. Morning. Be an idiot. Can you go and get some coffee? Absolutely gorgeous day here in Seattle. We're going to go try to find a car wash and um, clean the bikes up before we drop them back today. <laughs> So nice to have had a slept to be in the sun and have no luggage on the bike. It's just really freeing. What a beautiful day in Seattle, just blue skies and um, yeah, feeling feeling okay. Okay, we are at the car wash. We're going to clean the bikes. Let's just have a quick look at them before we clean them. Remember, we've already cleaned them once before, but this is what mine looks like. So seven and a half thousand miles. Let's see how they come up. Let's see David's damage. They got paint there. Yeah. yeah. Where else? What's the other damage? Dent in there. Paint there. Paint there. Yeah. Paint there. I dropped it on the other side. The only problem with washing them. You're gonna see all the scratches and rust. That's all right. That's no big deal, on man. There. Scratches and rust on the back. Oh, this indicator. Indicator's busted. You'll be right. Hey, um, question about the bike. Let's talk about the bikes. Yeah. Um, quality of ride, what would you give it out of 10? Well, I've only got a Sportster, so the comfort on this is sensational. Out of 10? Um, well, I've only got that to compare it to, so I'd say a 10. Okay, so I'm gonna give my ride an eight and a half. 
I had a soft tail heritage on in my New Zealand vlog, which was more comfortable. The only reason I'm giving it a, a, an eight and a half is because for me, the handlebars, I had to reach a little bit more, but again, it's about bike setup, so that could easily be changed. But the comfort was really good. Um, I found the bike safe, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fuel economy was pretty shit, 200 miles a gallon. I was okay when we went slow. Yeah, when we went slow, it went better. Um, what else? Um, braking, brakes were good. Yeah. Should have had ABS, but it doesn't matter. Um, tires, disappointed they didn't have new tires on them when we picked them up, yeah? Yeah. Considering we were hiring them for 26 days. Anyway, the base free, let's clean the car. So here's the thing, right? I have not checked the oil since we took off. So seven and a half kilometers. The bike's been sitting for about 10 minutes, which is normal. Let's see what the oil indicator says. This will say everything. Okay. Just checking the oil level. I need to wipe it on there. The oil is still pretty much perfect. How good's that? Seven and a half thousand miles. So, the people that keep knocking Harleys, I mean, I've never had an issue with them, not once. Anyway, there you go. Okay, bikes are clean. There they are. I just feel bad taking a bike back that's really dirty. I think it's respectful to try and clean it and do the best. I know some people would like us to take it back and see the shock on the dealer's um, face, but that's just not what I'm about. Um, you know, we've obviously um, driven the bikes hard. We want to try and um, be respectful as we can. the miles we did. Seven thousand four hundred and forty three miles. Just looking at David's back tire totally through to the canvas there. You can see it up there. Pretty dangerous. Don't, still here. don't drop it. I won't I won't Do you remember us? Yes! I watched your video! Oh my gosh, up to Mount Everest? Oh, no. That was crazy! <laughs> so how was your trip up to Alaska? Good, we're, we're, we're back a day early, we're alive. It was fantastic. So this lovely lady serving me. Mileage per day is high. Please check that these miles or kilometers, mm -hmm. if it's correct. It is correct. It you is, get a gold star. I get a gold star because we did seven and a half thousand miles in 22 days of hire. <laughs> so the system's asking to recheck that. <laughs> so you watched my Everest vlog or some of it? Yes, I did. Uh, did you think I'm crazy? Uh, no, I think you're living the dream. <laughs> living the dream. David was able to mono his. He got it up on one wheel. <laughs> Thank you, David. Yes, Daniel. Peter, the spring on the kickstand 
came off. It's a little loose, but it stays in place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is all pretty simple. Um, no extra charges. Um, they've been over the bikes, everything's good. Good for me, David had full coverage. My trusty chariot kept me safe, kept David alive, even though he had a couple of little bingles. Um, I lost none of my money. They're holding some of David's money until they find out some repairs. But um, what an incredible trip. And again, the Road King, 2018. I'm going to cry, mate. You're going to cry? Two oh. grand to sit on fire like that. <laughs> I don't know where I am, but I'm certainly not like in downtown. Where, am I in a bad suburb? I'm going to shine it on you in a minute, but I just want to yeah. hold the anticipation, Martha. Yeah. So me and Martha are sitting outside our hotel room because we thought it'd be a bit weird to be sitting in there. <laughs> I can delete that out. I know this lady. We were on the helicopter to Mount Everest together. So if you've watched my Everest vlogs where we get in the chopper where the pilot died, a couple of hours to come and see me. And this is Martha. Just say hi. Hi there. <laughs> I'm enjoying the view. Look at us. Look where we're sitting. We're sitting. We're sitting in a car park. Yes. In in is this what part of Seattle are we? It's not downtown. It's like uptown. No, we're or um, shit, shit town. We're in the northern part of Seattle. The northern part. Yes. Are you yes. are you like nervous being in this area? Um. Well, here I feel I have to be careful. How nice is it that this lady's come to say hello to me? We shared the most magical moment together on the helicopter, um, and we were both shocked that the pilot, who we thought was so awesome. He, he was awesome. He, he, was he died sick. about five weeks later. Yes. He was killed. Um, and so I feel a sort of an affinity to your family um, mm -hmm. with Victoria, their daughter, and Nick and her husband, Victor. And um, yeah, what a, what a special way to finish the vlog, to have a visitor that's come and come, you know, traveled a couple of hours to come and say hello. And, um, you know, I've brought it to this special place I mean, it's very romantic. Been listening to people scre screaming at each other, like wanting to fight. Um, it's quite interesting just sitting here and listening to all the, the feralness. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go. So what are we doing? Starting the venture home. What the hell are you wearing? You look like Mr. Harley Davidson. I am. Eagle Rider. They even gave me some free stickers for crashing the bike. <laughs> Is this all your gear? Yeah. That's everything? Yeah. Fuck man. I got more than that. Shit, I don't know why I've ended up with so much stuff. It's 4 a.m. We've been waiting 10 hours, three more hours until our flight leaves. Yeah, we're feeling pretty good considering we just came off a 16 hour flight and we haven't slept for 48 hours. But apart from that, I'm feeling good. How are you feeling, David? Morning. Yeah, now nah, feeling really, really good. Just uh, got us a couple of lattes. I'm going to punch you in the head in a minute. Hey, have a seat here. Have a seat here. I want to ask you some questions about the trip. Um, number one question, would you do it again? Yeah. Number two question, how hard was it on a scale of one to ten? So how hard did you think it was going to be and how hard was it actually? Well, the rider thought it was going to be hard. Um, on a scale of ten, how hard did I think it was going to be? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a ten because I saw uh, footage of the Dalton Highway, a uh, bloke doing it on like a dirt bike type thing, and he was saying that was pretty hard. So doing it on a Harley, I knew it was going to be hard. Um, Can I just interrupt? You should clean your teeth because your breath fucking stinks. Before. I'm just saying. Anyway, back to I'm, me. If I stunk like that, I'd want to know. Back to me. Back to me. Go on. Um, yeah, the trip. I thought you were going to be worse. What do you mean? I thought you were going to be like a 10, but you've probably only been, I don't know, maybe a 9. What do you mean? Nah. In, in what regard? Oh, just thought you'd be hard work. In what but way? We've got along quite well. We've not had an argument, have we? No, which, which, yeah. No, we got along fantastically. It was good. I was ambivalent about taking David along. Um, I'm glad I did, because I think it gave, brought a new dynamic to the vlog. Um, David had quite a few crashes. Yeah. Was it four? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, what was the most, the best thing for you? The best thing was probably going through the Rockies um, in Canada, around Banff. Around Banff, it yeah. was nice, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. a really nice area. Um, the ride from, say, Fairfield through Coldfoot to Dead Horse is pretty boring, would you say? Mm. 
it's all gravel. Yeah. You have to have your wits about you. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about road surface. And um, anyone knows a Harley weighs a ton. Once you lose that front wheel, you are going to drop it. And um, we didn't drop it at all, did we, in that area? Oh, no, not there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We're in Singapore waiting to fly to Melbourne. The bike, let's talk about the bike. What do you think of the bike? So yeah. this is the first time David's ridden, well, he rode my Road King for about a day. And then he rode, David's got a sports, a little Harley. What did you think of the, the Road King? Well, the sports store, I've probably only ridden it five or six times. Yeah. Um, so that's all I've really got to compare it to. Um, and riding yours for the day before we come on the trip, um, yeah, very comfortable compared to what I'm used to. Um, riding the bike on the trip? Did you feel safe? Yeah, I felt safe. Uh, the weather protection around it, you know, like at windscreen. Some, yeah, at some stages we were going, um, you know, a bit quick and it was a bit breezy as well. Um, mm. And I didn't feel a like bit the, quick, like a hundred miles an hour. Well, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> well, I, I, the signs were saying like a hundred, so yeah, I thought a yeah, hundred miles. Yeah, because in Australia it's a hundred. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I don't see that we broke the law. I just thought that the speedometer doesn't go very high. Well, yeah, it was hard with the kilometres and the miles. I was got confused. And, yeah, you would. Yeah. So you would buy a Road King. As since been in America though, I do like the look of the street glide and the yeah. road glide, so yeah, they look yeah. pretty cool. I agree, I agree. At any time did you feel that you were out of your depth, like this is really yes. dangerous? Yes. Yes. <laughs> At what parts? Um, percentage wise, probably 70% of the trip. 70% of the trip. Uh, no, that day of 10 hours in the rain, mm. um, that, was, that, was, that was horrendous. Yeah. yeah, that was really, really, really bad. Couldn't see, uh, bike was sliding all over the place. Um, yeah, a lot of changing in the conditions, like bitumen one minute, road oh. works the next. And then, um, and then wet bitumen too. Oh, what about, what about, what about that bump? <laughs> like they've got all these signs which say bump ahead and stuff and like it's that. a tiny bump. A little, little, like, little ripple. And then this we, one yeah, wasn't we've, posted. We've come off highway onto gravel, right, and the bump, you saw me fly through the air. I actually shifted my whole handlebars about four inches forward. I ripped them off, so I held on. My ass came up like that, and I did nearly flip off my bike. And then David didn't have any time to break, and he did exactly the same thing. Yeah. And you snapped some Oki straps. That, yeah, it snapped my strap off my Harley bag. Um, it goes on the back, yeah, just yeah, clean snapped it. But any, that, was, that was, yeah, that was pretty scary. Any, any close calls where you felt shit? I didn't have any close calls myself. Which is, which is good. We did seven and a half thousand miles, which is 12,000 kilometers. Uh, close calls only when I crashed it. Only when you crashed it. Yeah, that's a close call. That's not really a close call, that's a crash. Yeah, yeah. And were you scared when your tires got down to canvas? Were you thinking oh, the whole time, am I gonna blow out here? I was trying not to think about it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I couldn't help it the last two days. Um, the more I looked at it, the lower it was getting. Um, okay. And I was just praying for no rain. Yeah, yeah. You know. Here's a bit of a myth. You can get all the way to Dead Horse without spare fuel, can't you? Mm -hmm. We actually bought the fuel, extra fuel packs, which held, I think, 10 litres each, and we actually left them there, didn't we? Yeah. We, let, we left them in Dead Horse for someone to have. So you can fill up in the Yukon, you can fill up at Coldfoot, and you can fill up at Dead Horse. So, so this myth you've got to carry extra fuel for us, and we only had a short range of 200 miles, um, was no problem. Are you gonna come on the next adventure? Guess where, guess where the next adventure is? I don't know. I'm gonna ride a Harley into outer space. It's never sounds, been, it's never been done before. That sounds interesting. You have to wear a spacesuit. Mm. I'm gonna to go to Cape Canaveral and see if I can strap it to the space shuttle. Do you feel like you've been away for a long time? Or has it gone quick? Parts of it, you know. It's, Went it's, quick. It, yeah, it'd go quick and then it goes slow. Um, yeah, the first, the first probably week or so, I was like, shit, what have I got myself into? And then, yeah, I just started to really enjoy it after that. Yeah, to you know? the swing of it. Yeah. So, um, so seven, seven, seven hours on the bike was, was quite easy. What was Eight the longest hours, day? 16. 16, 16 hours was our longest day riding. And then there was another and that's, day, 14 hours. And, and that's with the stop every, you know, couple of hours, hour and a half, two hours. Um, how much money did it cost? To hire the bikes were all up. All up. A lot. Depends whether my wife's going to watch this. 
Oh, well, Danny, Danny paid for most of it. No, know? I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Um, um, Bikes were about five and a half thousand Australian, and that was with insurances. Yeah, plus the two grand that I'm probably not going to get back because that was a security deposit. So they're holding two thousand dollars of David's money because he did crash it a couple of times. I just want to say some people have commented that we were reckless with the bikes. Um, we 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 weren't reckless with the bikes. We were reckless with the bikes in that one spot, which we rode up onto gravel to ride to a river. We didn't realise I was an embankment, and I got bogged. And, um, and then the comedy of errors just started. Um, I just want to say that none of that was made up. Some people have actually said that we set that up. Mm. It's not true. It's just we caught the footage and it was what it was. 99% of what you saw was happened. It was just in real time, yeah. And that's real blood on my finger. It nearly fell off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was such a massive accident. Yeah. Um, the accommodation was bloody expensive. Accommodation, my God. And places that were fully Vancouver, booked out. Vancouver, <laughs> 500, 600 a night. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I just want to say the swag things we had yeah. were awesome, weren't they? What brand were they? King? Were they King or? Those just little single swags were mm. really comfortable. The temperature was good, wasn't it? Yeah. At night was yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. like 16 degrees. People have said this to me on a number of vlogs. They say that you're going to get a rock caught in the belt drive. I've driven a lot of kilometres in sand and on rocks on a Harley. I've actually driven up a river near Mount Everest and I've never had a rock caught in the, in the pulley. So it just doesn't happen, it hasn't happened to me. Um, we didn't have a puncher, which was awesome, touch wood. Um, I did have a puncher kit, um, though it did get confiscated at the airport, so that was helpful. Mechanically, oh, you saw me check the oil. The bike used no oil. People that knock Harley Davidsons and say they're unreliable, sorry, but they're not. They are super reliable. No, I... Do I you, you, you didn't really have a lot of Harley Davidson. You didn't really have a lot of motorbike experience before you went, did you, David? No, I'd ridden mine five or six times. <laughs> so David's experience on a motorbike was half a dozen times on his little Sportster, and then he did the, the dead horse with me. Mm. So I can edit something where it might seem that we're super reckless, but... I think we were relatively careful. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. like we probably only kept it to 100 miles on gravel. I wouldn't go to 110 on gravel. <laughs> nah, I was I was actually quite surprised. Um, you know, if it was getting too long or getting too dangerous, we'd we'd be talking about you know pulling the pin. You know, some days we just had to push through. Um, mm. But no, I felt felt safe, felt comfortable. Um, it took me about a week to get into the swing of things, but no, mm, it, it does. It, it was yeah. Good. Yeah, you know, we're talking quietly because we're in business class and it's 4am. We're just in the lounge, as you can see. There's no one here. So what would you give the trip out of 10? For I'd fun, say, adventure, yeah, fun, adrenaline? Adventure, experience, doing something different, going outside of your comfort zone, like I said earlier on, you know, I'd probably sit by a pool and go on a quad bike ride for, mm. for a bit of fun for half a day, you mm. know. Um, but I'm really glad I did it. Out mm. of what I've seen, we covered a fair bit of ground. Excuse me. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Um, I'd have to give it a nine. A nine, nine and ten. People have asked me how tough was the ride. Um, I just want to tell you this, the Everest ride was in a league of its own. That was tough. Um, the second hardest ride was probably the ride I did through Laos and through Cambodia. Um, no, sorry, the Cape York ride where I rode 2,000 kilometres on my Road King on gravel and dirt and sand, that was tough. The easiest ride I've done was New Zealand. New Zealand was beautiful, it was an easy ride. Um, people have asked me New Zealand over Canada. It's a hard one, New, New Zealand's really close and it's like a four hour ride across the ditch. Um, I would definitely do the South Island of New Zealand before I do Canada and then I would do Canada um, because New Zealand is beautiful. I'm glad you came along Davo. Yeah, thanks for the invitation Dave. No worries. Been good. Will you come on another one? Yeah, probably just need to get my knee looked at. Suit me. Fixed up. Alright. And I'll, I'll, I might get my licence too. <laughs> David doesn't have a motorbike licence. <laughs>
want to say this, John Van Drunen, you're up in heaven. I know you were with me. You were my guardian angel. I came back with not one scratch of me. Thanks, John boy. John Van Drunen is the guy that had the picture on my motorbike. He died about a week before I come to Alaska. And um, he was a very good friend of mine. And his wife is picking me up today. And um, she's a beautiful girl. And we're trying to support her through this really tough time. Because John was a good guy. And um, yeah, she's a great chick. And it was shit for her. And he had cancer and it was really short lived. 14 weeks he lasted. It was pretty shit. So um, you're with me, Johnny, in Alaska. Love you, man.